Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All coming to you on a Black Friday morning. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the United States. Um, yes, this video dropped yesterday, but also yes, I was spending time with family and I was like, nope, I will talk about this first thing on Friday morning. So first thing, <laughs> you can tell from my voice, very early in the morning, but uh, misinformation and I are going Black Friday shopping. <laughs> and so anyway, I wanted to talk about this video first and, and sort of put it in a little bit of context here. So without further ado, I recorded this. So let's go ahead and move this over here so it's out of the way. This is a video of Optimus catching a ball. So here we go. Two balls. We'll watch it one more time here. Then we'll slow it down. We'll take a look at it a little bit at a time here. So, all right. So there's a lot of differentiation going on here. We'll break down what's going on. But okay. So there you go. You have a couple of a couple of different things, and I like how it goes and it nods at whoever's off screen over there. Um, these are obviously tennis balls. I could tell from the sound of them when they dropped. I mean, they're yellow also, but when they when they drop and hit the ground, I played tennis for years and years, and it was you know it's like the sound of a tennis ball is the sound of a tennis ball. So anyway, that's that's what it is, and also interestingly enough, it is catching with its left hand, which is, I, I mean, just curious because that's only ten percent of the population. So if you're thinking about getting a bunch of data for um, an autonomous, you know, type of robot or something, one would think right-handed, but it actually is left-handed in this case. Now, obviously, eventually it will have both hands. It won't be just left-handed. It will have two of these new hands, but you can see if we can back this up just a little bit here. Yeah, if you look at the right arm, the right arm is the old arm. So this is actually a really, really useful video, not just for the motion, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, but also to look at the differentiation between the old arm and the new arm. The new arm is substantially cleaner looking at everything. Now, um, when, if we go over to X here real quick, we can see that you know Elon got in on this and said Optimus will be like having your own personal C-3PO and R2-D2, which is very, very true. And um, if you saw the Kim Kardashian video, I, I was not particularly interested in. I don't really care about Kim Kardashian, sorry folks. But anyway, uh, you know, she did a video with Optimus recently and it, it was, you know, it was really, really cool and everything, but not nearly as impressive as this. I mean, catching a ball is, is an incredibly difficult challenge. It, that, that requires a, a large number of things to go correct to be able to catch it, and it did it twice in one shot without a mistake. So that's very impressive. So a few um, you know, sort of reactions and things like that to talk about first before we get into the meat of this. So you know, not only is the hand impressive, but the reaction time is amazing, which it really is. I mean, it's the, the fact that it's able to just like you know, catch something out of the air. That, that's, it's a skill that, let's see, I don't know, a child where would you put them? Somewhere around later single digit years, right? You know, somewhere in the six to eight year old range before they would be able to catch something as efficiently as this. So we're moving on from a toddler that's walking like it just dropped a load in its diapers to being able to do something substantially more sophisticated. This, this, is, this is very challenging. I mean, you know, this is, this is something that, that uh, separates humans out from other creatures is the ability to catch balls. And, and not all creatures, dogs could catch balls and things like that too. But, but anyway, really impressive uh, ability here. Um, anyway, yeah, and as Darren here says, better hand-eye coordination than some humans. Uh, he, she obviously is left-handed, which is also interesting. And then Chan Sun says, this is porn for us, which it kind of is. It's just like, holy crap. You know, I was at, at Thanksgiving and just kind of hanging out with family, and I saw the video, and I was just like, ah, you know. Also, really cool of Tesla to drop this first thing in the morning on Thanksgiving Day, so thanks, guys. <laughs> anyway, happy Thanksgiving to all of us. Um, and, you know, there's the assumption that this may be teleoperated, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. I have proof that it's not. I would think it is not given the reaction time needed to catch the ball. What are your thoughts? Is this autonomous? And I'll stop with this one. Uh, well, I'll stop with the one below. Uh, it has to be remote would, would have way too much latency. If you've ever operated anything, teleoperated anything, it's, it's, you can do it as long as it's very slow, but the reaction time is in you know, more substantial fractions of a second. And in order to catch a ball, you have to be like right on it to be able to do something like that. And then finally, I'll stop with this one here. Uh, Austin said, a friend of mine is the director of operations at an aircraft engine overhaul company. Uh, I showed him this video today at dinner and he asked where, where he could order them, Optimus. Having zero knowledge of the humanoid robot development, he, he immediately recognized the value 
and um, sorry, <laughs> open this up and rattled off a dozen use cases. It'll change the world in ways we cannot imagine. And I said, yeah, and Optimus you know, and his ilk, you know, not just Optimus, but Figure and other, other humanoid robots are going to completely change the world. In 10 years, it'll be hard to imagine a world without humanoid robots everywhere. So I'm, I'm thinking 10 years, like a decade as a reasonable sort of time frame. It is going to take many years for these things. You know, when the first automobile came out, it wasn't like there was millions of them on the road immediately because it just takes a period of time to be able to get to be able to create something like this. And of course, to make it good enough that people want it. But this this is developing really, really rapidly. This isn't the, you know, the, the gas cars from the 1890s from, you know, Mr. Mercedes or Mr. Benz or whoever creating these these carts and everything. These, this the, the technology, it, now you could, you could say the equivalent of that was the 1990s or something and, and that it's taken a long time to get to this point, but we're getting to the part where it's getting very, very steep because you can see some very substantial, this, this is really impressive, um, updates and everything. So anyway, and then a shock underneath here said thankful for deep learning. So that was very appropriate given that it was uh, Thanksgiving Day and everything. So anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, thank you to the, the Tesla AI team who I think that's what they're called now. <laughs> I believe I just did a video. If you haven't seen that one, I just did a video about uh, uh, Tesla's uh, full self-driving and the work that they've done and they're calling themselves generally Tesla uh, AI. This of course is Tesla Optimus that did this, but, but anyway, so a lot of very, very proud people and I hope they all took a day off to enjoy time with family and everything. All right, so switching over here, I'm going to turn off the sound on this because it was very loud. This was at Wee Robot, and this was me, you know, talking to Optimus, which was very cool. But here, notice that Optimus has a blue LED around its face. So that was teleoperated, and of course, it's doing its thing, and it's got the old version of the hand and all of that kind of stuff. And I was very, very happy. And of course, if we switch over here, you can see that Optimus has a red LED on its head. Let me turn off the sound here. It's, no, <laughs> it's really nothing except the sound of machinery and everything like that. But if we go, you can see that it is operating in red mode, which has been established, at least my assumption is that that is um, teleoperated mode. And again, the, it's not blue, so it's not being teleoperated. Teleoperated is blue mode. Um, red mode I, is, is autonomous mode, basically. And so, um, it's, it's, it's clearly operating autonomously in this case. And again, like I said, just beyond the, um, the, 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 the red light on its head, this is just something that it just couldn't, it wouldn't be able to do. There's no way you're gonna be able to catch a ball in teleoperated mode. There's just too much latency, too much drag on all of this stuff. So very, very impressive stuff. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Mr. Arm here. <laughs> so again, there's only so much we can see. This is a low resolution video. This is, I blew it up. I got it as big as I could. But you can see the old arm has the twin actuators, has the old hand with the 11 degrees of freedom with a lot of the motors in the palm and everything. The new hand <clears throat> looks kind of from this distance a little bit like chain mail. I'll show a picture of this in just a second. In fact, actually, I'll bring it up. So the new hand, this is from um, Wii Robot again. So this is a still frame image from a video, but this is a, a likely the new hand. I mean, maybe there's another version 3.0, like the Gen 3 hand, so this may be 3.1 or something, but if we switch over here, it, it looks like it's um, probably the same thing with some sort of like glove on. Looks a little like Michael Jackson, honestly, with the one hand with the silver glove, so maybe we got a Michael Jackson thing going on, I don't know. But anyway, if we go over here, you can see this, <clears throat> this is tendon controlled, so it's got lots and lots of, of effective tendons like a human hand that go down, which allows it to do things like live long and prosper, what it's, is what it's doing there. If you haven't caught uh, Scott in my video about this, definitely check it out. We did it right after we robot and Scott and I get into a lot of the details of the hand. And it is 22 degrees of freedom, so that means that it's able to move in many different ways. You know, there's lots of degrees for each finger, then it's able to do things like this, and it's able to move its thumb like this, and it's able to move its pinky like this. That's what this sort of like, I don't know, <laughs> this divot, this crevice here, uh, you know, because it's a different piece on the pinky, which allows it to move. And the thumb, you can't see particularly well from this angle, but it has the same kind of thing, which allows it to move in and out like this. And then all the hands, of course, are jointed. And so all of these guys down here, this bottom part is the cabling system that goes into the arm. And so that, of course, will tie into what we saw here. So let's go back here. And so if you look here, of course, you can see the difference is all the way basically from the uh, upper arm, it looks like the upper arm is still the same. So like this part to the elbow, but then after the elbow, things change pretty substantially. So if we go here, yeah, you can see basically, the, even the elbow is slightly different though. It looks like it's it's got more um, 
you know, the flexible padding area and stuff. But you can see that the forearm is incredibly, you know, this is amazing. Look at what we've gone from. Let me get a better angle of the arm from the other end. Yeah, so here you can see, you know, this was very thick and had the kind of Popeye arms and everything and a lot of actuators and things sticking out. We have gone to now a completely like human sized arm. It's just like this, there's no, um, in fact, it's actually a little bit skinnier than my forearm. <laughs> so so this, is, this is really impressive just in terms of size. And they've clearly been able to, you know, put it into a casing, either aluminum or plastic, that is uh, that covers the, the entire thing and all of the mechanisms and everything for this entire hand now fit into a human size arm. So they've, they've done biomimicry. I, it, it, it feels like wizardry to me, honestly, because that's just insanely difficult to do something like that, to miniaturize all of this stuff. It's one of the things that Apple is famous for, right? You know, you get the little AirPods that are like this big and have a ton of technology in here. Here, we've got the same, ba but this is more mechanical. It's not just electronic. This is mechanical technology put into this and incredibly small. But anyway, so you can see that it transitions from the aluminum or plastic casing into the hand area and then goes up into the hands and you can see some of these, um, these you know, little uh, divots and stuff. And I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe those are there. I, I'm guessing that there's a glove on it because I'm guessing that we're looking at, where is it here? I'm guessing we're looking at this hand with, with a glove on it, but again, we are seeing some divots there. So maybe this is another evolution of that same hand but it's actually got, uh, maybe they've done something where it's like more of a, like a rubber thing. Instead of, instead of like a glove, it's actually more like a latex or something, but I guess a very form-fitting glove or something. So anyway, it, it's really hard to tell because this is incredibly low resolution, but it's very fascinating to look at this and to see how, how uh, substantially they have reduced things. So, you know, moving, this, this video is, is probably gonna end up being historic and I hope that somebody has a still frame that's a better quality still frame from this because to actually be able to see both hands in the same video is really fascinating. And once they've moved to completely this hand and that's all that they're using, this, it already looks primitive, but it's gonna look incredibly primitive after they shift everything over. So, you know, Tesla AI is working towards this Gen 3 Optimus and this is a substantial part of it. And just again, once again, let's just take a look at this because seeing it in motion is worth a lot more because here you can see it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting, eye-hand coordination, so it's able to see things coming at it, you know, through, through its cameras and everything, and it's able to move there quickly. So, so you can see it's kind of moving and waiting, and then obviously the person's hand comes into it and you get the motion blur. So again, think about this, this is, this is it's like, you know, playing catch with a, with a little kid or something, you have to train them up. So clearly this is a substantially difficult task. But anyway, so its hand is waiting here and I'm just looking at it. And as the ball gets thrown, you can see that it's already moving up, right? To figure out where the ball is going, which is out of frame. And then it comes in and then catch, right? So it's catching it in kind of a going away motion, which is honestly even more complicated than catching it straight forward. Although honestly, well, maybe not, because when you catch it straight forward, it has a tendency to bounce. This is a way of taking up the momentum. So this may be a better a better way for it to catch in terms of the, the, the possibility of success. But anyway, so you can see it's actually pulling away and grabbing the momentum away from the ball and taking it like this. So very, very cool. And it's doing it just, again, just like a human would do it. Very interesting that it's able to catch this. And this is just a few frames, right? We're talking about just a fraction of a second here to be able to do all of this work. And it catches it. And also notice that the entire body is reacting to this, which you have to, right? Because you're moving your arm. So there's a substantial motion. So the entire body has to react to the arm as it goes. So it's up, it's up, it's up. And then you can see the entire body twisting around right and then regaining balance so all very impressive this is the reason why before neural networks you couldn't make robots that would do things like this because it was so complicated to piecemeal all of this stuff together you really need an end-to-end -end solution because there are so many actions that are happening in just this one little catch it's moving its body around it's having to use its eyes it's having to coordinate things it's having to understand velocity vectors and things like that and understand where that is it's having to understand what one would do with your hand and then actually execute all of those maneuvers and right so it's very impressive and then i really like <laughs> that it actually drops it and uh 
nods at the person at the end, right? So there's like a little like, hey, yeah, I did that. So very, very cool. Anyway, one more time just for fun. It, it is an amazing video. And like I said, I was, I was, you know, just sitting around hanging out, look, about to go um, visit family for Thanksgiving. And I saw the video and I was just like, geez, this is, this is incredibly impressive. So anyway, if you weren't impressed previously, I hope you are now because this is, a, this is a really amazing work by the Tesla AI team. And I'm sure you will all agree. Anyway, uh, definitely let me know what you think about in the comments. And you know, while you're down there, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, that super helps out the channel. I would love to get to 100,000 subscribers before my birthday in late January. So help me out if you don't mind doing that. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Who knows what we'll talk about? Maybe we'll get another Optimus one. That would be really cool. But I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.